Well, praise his holy name. Well, glory to God. We're in Jonah chapter two. We done seen some things. You know, Jonah running from God. You know what I mean? Don't want to do the will of God. You got to understand something now. Jonah was God's man. And I'm telling you right now, today, I, I got to drop this on you right now. You are God's man. You are God's woman. You are God's servant. And God's calling on all the servants of God. He's calling on all Christians to stand strong and let the world know, number one, he's coming soon. Number two, to ask the world, that's anybody. If they're human, ask them, are you saved? And then number three, if, you, if they ain't saved, hey, you need to repent and get saved. Amen. Repentance has always been the message that God has used to stir revival. And John the Baptist came preaching repentance. Jesus came preaching repentance. And here God sends Jonah to the Ninevites preaching repentance. Repentance is the message of the day. We all need to repent. We do daily. We all need to get busy evangelizing and letting people know they need to repent because God is coming soon. So glory to God. We're going to take up on the story. Y'all remember in the first chapter, God sent the word to Jonah. Jonah heard the word, got the instructions from God, got his assignment from God. And what did he do? He turned tailed and ran. He did not like the Ninevites. He hated them. They had enslaved, you know what I mean, his people and enslaved him, and he just did not like them. They were some mean, rotten, ornery, oh my God. They were some sadistic people. And yet God sent Jonah to them because God is a merciful God. You gotta understand something about our God. Our God is a merciful God. Our God is a loving God. Our God is a God of grace. Our God doesn't like to destroy, doesn't like to judge. But when we push God to that point, like the Ninevites, they pushed God to that point. And yet Jesus, you know what I mean? He took it all for us. He took it all for us. And all he's saying to us right now is go spread the word. Go tell somebody. Go ask somebody. Hey, tell somebody. You need to repent. You see somebody wilding out? Yo, you need to slow down. You need to repent and, and, and do right by God. It's easy to say. It's easy to do. But we got to just have our minds made up. Christian, God is counting on you to bring the word of repentance to people, to bring the word of salvation to people. People need to be asked that simple question. And so here we have Nineveh, you know what I mean? These some rude, rude, cruel, rotten people. They Satan worshipers. And God says, all right, your cup is full. Your cup is like full. And the next thing that's going to happen in your lives, Ninevites, I'm about to judge y'all. But God says, before I do, I'm going to give you one more chance. I don't know about you. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't want to be on that list where God is so, you know what I mean? He's so you know, just fed up that he says, all right, one more shot. I'm going to give you one more chance. I don't want to be on that list. You don't want to be on that list. And we're not on that list. Hallelujah. But, you know, the Ninevites were, and God's love came through. Even when they was fit and right for judgment, God says, I'm going to give you one more shot. That's the heart of God in our lives. That's the heart that we have. We have that same love and nature shed abroad in our hearts, according to the book of Romans. And we got to operate in that. But when we operate in that, we got to do some explaining to some folks why we operate in love, why we choose to forgive. But we got, sometimes we got to let them know, look, you are like a Ninevite. You are a Satan worshiper. You are, you are a murderer. You are a thief. You are a pilferer. You know what I mean? You are, you are, you are, you are a greedy, honorary rascal. But God loves you. And I'm here with the message of repentance to tell you, you need to change from your ways. And only God can bring change in your life that will cause you to get back up on the good list with God. And we can, sometimes you have to have that conversation with some people. You have to just look some people and I say, look, I ain't judging you. I'm not, I'm not condemning you, but you need to repent. You need to get right with God in this area or that area or that area. You need to repent because right now your, your stuff is getting God agitated. Blood of Jesus and all. So, you know what I mean? We, we, you gotta have boldness to speak that message. Jonah didn't want to speak that message. Jonah was God's guy. You know what I mean? And today, Christians today, we are God's prophets in the earth. We are God's voices in the earth. And God is telling us not to do to Jonah, not to, not to run from our responsibility, not to run from our assignment, but to let people know that Jesus is coming soon. Let people know that they need to repent of their sins. Let people know they need to get right with God and asking people this simple question. 
Are you saved? Have you made Jesus your Lord and Savior? You'll be amazed at the responses that you get and you'll be amazed at how compliant people are because people really want truth and they're hurting right now and, and they're scared right now. And we don't want to scare them into the kingdom of God. We want to offer them God's mercy, God's grace, but we want to explain it to them. You got to explain to a sinner why God loves them. You got to explain to a sinner why God has mercy. You got to explain to the ungodly the awesomeness of God's kindness and, and, and God's favor in their lives. Because if you don't explain it to them, I guarantee you Satan going to help them take it wrong. He's going to help them take it wrong because Satan is the one that's got them in that mess that they're in anyhow. We coming in as the answer. We coming in as the ones that have the answer. We, ha we are the answer to their situation. We can't fix their situation, but we can point them to the one that can fix it. And that's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides, the Lord that heals, the Lord that delivers, the Lord that saves, the Lord that shows truth. And so that's what we're all about. So here's Jonah. You know that he done got run away from God. He down there on this boat. God sends a storm. I'm going to tell you right now, when you God's representative, you God's child, don't run from God. Don't, that's, that's a, that's a foolish, that's a foolish move. Don't run from God. Just say, okay, God, I really don't want to do what you want me to do, but but I read Jonah's story. I don't want to go through anything similar to what he went through. I don't want to go through no kind of confinement in my movement. I don't want to go through no type of, you know, lockdown. You know what I mean? And, and I'm stalled in my forward momentum. I mean, okay, God, I'm, I'm your guy. I'm your girl. I'm here to do your will. It's not my will be done. It's your will be done. You want me to go and preach to these Ninevites? All right, I'm going to go and preach to these Ninevites. And I'm going to do it with a good attitude. That wasn't Jonah. Jonah was like, nah, I ain't going. So now he done put the mariners' lives at stake, his life at stake. You know what I mean? Just a whole bunch of nonsense, a whole bunch of unnecessary trials and tests and tribulations and just, a, just a, a, some unfortunate experience all because he would not do what God told him to do. So we don't want to do that. We want to be obedient to God. We want to be willing. We want to be, we want to be those that that do what God wants done with a good heart. And whatever God calls on you to serve, whatever capacity he calls on you to serve, wherever he tells you to go, whoever God tells you to talk to, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and tells you to tell somebody that God loves them, tell that person God loves them. They need it. And you need it too. You need the relief and the release of obeying God, and they need the healing and the good news that comes from God. And you and I, we are the tools. We are, the, we are the instruments of God in the earth. So, you know, Jonah didn't do that, got the mariners all messed up. The mariners was like, they went on an invest, investigative mode and they found out that Jonah was a Hebrew. He was a child of God, a prophet of God, and he was running from God. And long story short, they tried to save his life, but he told them from the Lord, throw me overboard. I'm the reason why you in all this trouble. And we don't want to be like that as Christians. We don't want to be the reason why people around us are in trouble because we're disobedient. And because we won't obey God's word, we got to start obeying God's word so that we can be a blessing to people and so that they don't stumble over our stumbling in the name of Jesus. So now we get through this situation and guess what? The mariners, they do everything they can to try to get the boat back to shore to try to save Jonah. And finally, they like they, we are like making no kind of no kind of headway on this storm. And so they started crying out to God. They said, God, lay not. This guy sent on our account, lay not his blood on our account. You read it in chapter one. And they said, now, Lord, we about to throw this guy overboard. And they threw Jonah overboard. And soon as they did, soon as they got rid of the disobedient, rebellious prophet, the disobedient, rebellious child of God, you don't want to be hanging out with disobedient, rebellious children of God. You don't want to hang out with them kind of Christians. You want to find you some Christians that love God, that do the will of God, that's got strong faith that's got great faith, that's moving and shaking for the glory of God. They doing for God. Them the kind of Christians you want to surround yourself with. Those are the kind of friends you want to surround yourself with. Amen. And so they threw Jonah overboard immediately. Immediately, as soon as they threw Jonah overboard, God stopped the wind. God stopped the storm. It, the, the sun came out. Everything went back to normal. Everything was beautiful. So powerful was the move of God when the, when the, when the obedience of God caught up to those sailors' hearts and understanding when they realized 
God said, throw Jonah overboard. When they got in obedience with that, guess what? God blessed them. As long as they was resisting the instruction of Almighty God, they had to storm. And sometimes, you know what I mean, when we when we resist the obedience of God, the man, the devil comes in there and brings storms. It's not God, not in, not in the New Testament. It's not God bringing a storm into your situation. But you can be opening doors for the enemy to come in and keep your stuff stalled and keep your stuff, you know what I mean, from going forward. And God, God's looking at it and saying, okay, you know what I mean? I'm, I can't do nothing to it until you start obeying. And the minute we start obeying from the heart, then all of a sudden we start seeing things start changing in our circumstance and in our environment. So as soon as those mariners obeyed God and threw Jonah overboard, all of a sudden the sun came out, storm ceased, all of the stuff that they was going through stopped instantly, like the snap of a finger, stopped. Then guess what? So great was that impact on those mariners and so great was their obedience and so great was their focus and connection with God. These guys started they started worshiping and praising the God of heaven. They started worshiping and praising. Now, before then, they was worshiping trees and frogs and, and birds and all of them stuff. They was into Satan worship. You know what I mean? But now they done got a revelation because Jonah went up in there and caused all them problems. And God took what was meant for bad by Jonah and turned it into good. So now these guys are worshiping. You read in, jo in Jonah chapter one, they worshiping God, they praising God, and then they made vows to God. They made vows to God. They say, God, you are the true and the living God, and we're going to make this vow to you, and we're going to keep this vow. And they went off, off of that situation with a relationship with Almighty God. That's the good news. That's what I love about God, because God can take anybody's mess up and turn it into good. People start getting saved. People come to the truth of Almighty God and hallelujah. And we let them know, look, sometimes we can get sideways. Sometimes we can do the Jonah. But we ain't trying to do the Jonah. So they threw Jonah overboard. Now, Jonah, we saw this last week. Jonah thought he's free and clear. Jonah like, I'm about to die. I'm not going to Nineveh. But we got to understand this here. And Jonah failed to understand this here. That when God wants something, God going to get what he wants. Because God will wait us out. Here, God waited Jonah out. So here, Jonah's thrown overboard. And as soon as this cat hit the water, he wasn't in the water good before that great fish swallowed his behind up, swallowed him up. God prepared the fish. God says, look, follow this boat. And I want you, as soon as, as, soon as a guy come overboard, I want you to swallow him, but you can't chew him. I want you to swallow him, but you can't digest him. Just swallow him. I'll take over from there. I got to have a talk with him. And so here we go. Here we pick up. Jonah and Ben, you know, I don't mean to laugh at this here because this was a serious situation, okay? And, and you know, and, and so, you know, Jonah, <laughs> Jonah up in the belly of this whale. We say whale, but it was, it's just the Bible says a big fish, right? So he's in the belly of this great fish, and he's in there three days and three nights. Now, Jonah was one tough, hard-headed rascal. And we don't want to be like that. We don't want to, we don't want to be like that in reverse. We don't want to be like that in disobedience. But Jonah was a hard rascal. He did not want to go to Nineveh. And so here God got this big fish and he done swallowed Jonah. Jonah down there swimming around in that fish. You know what I mean? He got seaweed coming by him. He got chewed up fish coming by me. He had a messed up situation. It was so messed up that Jonah said, this is like being in hell. He says, I'm in hell. I done died. I, I'm, in, I'm facing death right now. Now, three days and three nights, you up there ain't got nothing to do. You three days and three nights, and you sitting up in there, and, you, and, and, and now God ain't saying nothing to you because God is like, look, I done told you I want you to go to Nineveh. But no, you want to go to Joppa and then go down to Tarshish. No, you, you want to go away from me. So, all right, I, I'm not going to break you. I'm not going to... I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to kill you, but I'm going to, I'm going to create a circumstance that's going to see if you strong enough really and got the fortitude to, to, to wait it out. And what we do know about this story is that Jonah had three days worth of toughness. He up in the belly of that fish and he in there three days. He's like, I'm not going in them. I'm not going in them. And, and I'm telling you right now, the world, listen to me, Christian, the world is Nineveh. Yes, the world is Nineveh. 
them people in your family them, that's not saved, them people at your job that's not saved, them people at your grocery store that's not saved, them people that you walk around every single day that is not saved, whether you know if they are or not. If you know they saved, they not Ninevites. But if they are not saved and you're not sure, God is calling us to say to the world, every human being we can, repent. Jesus is coming soon. God is calling us with an assignment similar to Jonah's, that we are to go to the world, ask them some questions. Hey, are you saved? Are you ready to meet Jesus? You need to repent. And I'm telling you right now, the sins of the world, the sins of the world and these, some of these folk done raised up. God like, okay, enough. I'm about to mobilize my entire family and they come in with the same message. What's that message? Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent because Jesus is coming soon. Repent. Are you saved? You need to do works of righteousness to say thank you to God. And so we, again, we hear this message. I'm telling you right now, every one of us need to be out there at least three a day. That's our goal. Or three a week. I'm going to work with you. But three a week, you need to be asking somebody, are they saved? You need to be telling somebody to repent. You need to ask them, have you repented of your sins and got right with God yet? That's real simple. But you got to do it. Jonah was given a simple message. Go to Nineveh. Go to Nineveh and tell Nineveh they need to repent. That's, that was the message. Tell Nineveh, go and repent. Hallelujah. And so that's the same message. It's the same message that God has given. It's the same message that he gave way back in the day. It's the same message for today. So for us right now, we are like the children of God, the prophet of God, the messengers of God to this world who are literally in the same condition that, that the Ninevites was in. Their sins have gotten to the point that God is like, okay, look, I done had enough and, and, and watch this here. And God is saying, it's time for y'all to get right. That's our job. What a great job we got. We got a great job. Okay. So now. Here, Jonah, three days, three nights. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, in this New Testament, you, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't want nothing to hinder your blessing and your flow. You don't want nothing to, to throw that off. You, you just don't, that's just not a, that's not a good look, right? So, here, Jonah, let's go to chapter two. Now, Jonah, three days, listen, three days, three nights, he in the belly of that big fish. And he is in some horrible environmental conditions. He does not like what is going on. And you got to understand something. He hates the Ninevites. He don't want to go to the Ninevites. He'd rather die. Now, see, he thought he was going to die. God says, no, you're not dying, not yet. You'll be up in that thing for a month. Come out of there skinny. Come out of there just all, all jacked up. But after three days, Jonah broke. What does God got to do? Or what does God got to allow to happen to get us to break? I'm, me, I'm saying, God, all you got to do is tell me what you want. Give me the strength to do it. And it's done. Point me in the direction you want me to go. Give me the strength to do it. I just need to know that it's you talking. I'm good. I'll, I'll say what you say. Like I said, you know, it's easy to say that right now, but see, you got to say that right now when you ain't did nothing. You got to say that right now when he ain't called you up for an assignment so that your faith gets big. So you hear yourself and then you can affirm that and then you can confirm it. You got to affirm it and then confirm it. So now let's read. Three days, he's been in the belly of this fish. See, we, he, 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 he hungry. He in a bad situation. And he thinking, man, this is, I, I'm, I feel like this is death. This is worse than hell. I'm in hell right now. No, Jonah wasn't in hell. He was in the belly of that fish. So now here he comes on. Look at verse one. See, when, when, we, when we don't want to create rebellion and resistance to God's will. You know what I mean? Because we, we hinder our flow. And you don't want your flow hindered. You don't need your flow hindered right now. You don't want Jehovah Jireh not gyring in your life. You, don't, you, you want to be obedient and willing so that you can eat the good of the land and then be able to defeat everything that the devil throws at you, right? So look at this here. Three days, he done toughed it out. 
he breaks. Look what he says. Verse one. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And said, I cried by reason of mine infliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Now, he wasn't in literal Gehenna, in the belly of that fish. And he cried out to God. He didn't cry out to God because of willingness and obedience, because he just loved doing the will of God. He cried out to God out of that affliction, out of that test and that trouble and that distress he was in. I don't want to say yes to God because I had to go through trial, test, and distress. You don't want that either. That is not, that is not a good look. It is not a good thing to have on your resume. God will use it. Because there's a lot of people doing the same thing. A lot of people doing the Jonah. Not you and I. We off that list. Look at this next verse. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Now, Jonah like, all right, God, this is what you did to me. All right. All right. You, you threw me in the sea. I don't know if God was like, <laughs> you know, this wouldn't have had to happen if you had just went to Nineveh, like I told you. I bet Jonah was probably saying, that was wrong. God, we didn't have to go that far. You know what I mean? Then look at this here. Verse four. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. Now, wait a minute. God never took his eyes off of Jonah. But Jonah took his eyes off of God in his own mind, trying to run, you know what I mean, to Tarshish. But God never, Jonah got this thing all mixed up. Jonah all messed up right now. But he crying out from his, from his heart. And you know, a lot of times when we're under a lot of pressure and stress, especially if it's negative pressure and it's stealing, killing, and destruction, you know what I mean? Sometimes, Pressure and circumstance can make folks say some crazy things. Aren't you glad you know the Bible and you know how to talk to God, no matter whether you're on the mountaintop or whether you're in a valley? I mean, no, we shouldn't be in a valley of shadow death, except for one circumstance and one circumstance only. That's when we're going down there to pull somebody out. We don't want to be down there in the valley of the shadow of death because we disobey God. Amen. We don't want to be in no fish's belly because we disobeyed God. No, we want to go to the assignment that God gave us, and we want to come in there with full power, full authority, and speak the word of God, and watch God bring revival. Now, that's how to live every day. Every time you go up on somebody, expect some, when you go up on somebody, and, 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 and you tell them, you ask them, hey, are you saved? You ask them, have you repented of your sins and got right with God? Expect God to touch their heart, and expect God to say to them, you know what I mean, this is your time. And expect them to look at you and say, no, I haven't done that. And then you respond on them and say, look, we can get this done right now. Look at the circumstance and the situation. And if the circumstance and the situation warrants it, then you look at them and say, look, would you like to get that done now? I've done it. And, and, and it's so simple. You just got to mean it in your heart. You just got to believe. All you, gotta do, you just got to believe because this is God's formula. I'm telling you right now, you get two or three of them a day, you get two or three of them a week. You're going to feel really, really, really good about yourself. You're going to feel really, 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 really good about helping God reach other people. You're just going to feel good, man. You're talking about fulfilling your purpose. There's nothing better than that. That is just like, wow, you are on point with touching people's lives for the glory of God. And we also got to touch Christians' lives, too. We got to encourage Christians. Amen. So let, let's go ahead. Verse, verse 4, he says, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again. Toward thy holy temple. When you run from God, you get an attitude with God. You, 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 God tell you to do something. You don't want to do that. Chances are you, you're going to leave church. You're not going to go to church. Especially if, if you in a scenario where at the church, they keep reminding you of what you're supposed to be doing. Encouraging you too. But you want, Jonah, Jonah ran from God. He ran from his assignments in, 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 the, in the kingdom of God. He ran from church. He ain't going to church. He, going, he, going, he wasn't going to church. He went down to job. He going to Tarshish. Okay? So we don't want to be in that situation. Look at this here. The waters compassed me about, even the, to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. He in a bad situation. But he caused it. 
Yeah, he want to try to blame God. He want to say, God, you did this, you did. No, God, like you doing this. You the one making decisions. So we don't want to be like that. We're not going to make no adverse decisions against the assignment that God has given us. We're going to say, God, equip us. We're going to get it done. That's the attitude to have. God, you want us to show mercy because, you know, you show mercy to us. God, we're going to show mercy to others. I know. You know what I mean? Because we got some real Ninevites in our situation. And sometimes you don't want to forget them Ninevites. Sometimes you want to meet one of them Ninevites in the middle of the night, light them up. But you can't do that because you're a child of God. And God says, I'll reward you when you, repent, when, you, when you repent if you need to. But when you reach those Ninevites. Come on, let's reach us some Ninevites. All right, look at this here. He says, seed weaves around my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Let me tell you something. God's plan, when we get in obedience, when we call on God, look at it. He called on God, verse 1. God will raise us up. Your exaltation, my exaltation, our exaltation is in process. But it starts with us repenting before God and fulfilling our assignments, making, making our choice to do God's will, and then God can turn and pour all those blessings on us. I like that. I like that a whole lot. I know you like that too. I said, I, you know, God will bless us up front. He'll bless us. Then he'll come and ask for an assignment to be fulfilled. And, and that's when, you know what I mean? See, some folk just have a relationship with God well, they just want God to bless them, 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 bless them. But God says, that's one way. Now, you need to reciprocate. And God says, I need you to bless me. But but I don't need cause. I, I don't need I don't need steak. I, I don't need a new wardrobe. God says, I need you to go and tell people how to save their soul. See, that's how God gets blessed. God says, I want you to go and tell this person over there that I love them. That's all I want you to say. Just tell them I love them. Why? Because, see, where God's got that person, you might be the only one that can reach up in there and drop that word on them in that moment. And then if in that moment God been dealing with them, God got you strategically placed to give the message that God has given you to give to them. Don't worry about your blessing. You need, a, you need a roof on your house? God says, you work for me, I work for you. What you need? You, you need? you need a new car? God says, you work for me, I work for you. You need, a, you, you need a promotion? God says, you work for me, I work for you. See, God will give us the instruction on how to improve and how to increase. We just got to fulfill the instruction. Yeah, it's just that simple. I mean, God, God is like, I'm, I'm working so fast because time is so short and Satan is so angry because he knows he's got a short time. That's why he's wilding out right now. He knows his time is almost up. He's going to be in a lake of fire for the rest of eternity. This is his only free time right now. Okay? So watch this here. He says, oh, Lord, my God, you brought up my life from corruption. I'm telling you right now, God is bringing us out of corrupt situations, out of decaying situations, out of situations that look like there's no hope. God says, I'm your hope. I'm the God of your life. I'm your Jehovah Jireh, and I'm bringing you up because you have turned to a willing heart and an obedient mind and an obedient lifestyle. And, and God says, watch my blessing. Watch how I respond to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at this here. When my soul fainted, verse 7, this is Jonah talking. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. When situation and circumstance gets so bad, one or two things going to happen. People either rebel more and get into more wickedness, or they come to themselves and they turn to God. They come to themselves and they cry out from the heart to God. And that's the most sincere praying that, that, that is ever done until you learn how to pray sincere prayers to Almighty God. Not manipulative prayers, but sincere prayers. 
that glorify God, that benefit and bless you and bless people around you. You're not praying so that you can look good. You're not praying so that people can know that you get prayers answered. You're praying because God told you to pray and you're praying because it releases God to help people's lives. It releases God's power to help your life. And you're praying so that when God finishes the work, when God completes his assignment, do you know every time you pray, you put God on assignment? That when God completes his assignment, then you get to glorify God. You get to tell all your friends how God blessed you. That's a good deal, all right? When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came unto thee, into thine holy temple. That's why when you come to church, if you can make it to church, say your prayers from holy ground. Say your prayers from the assembly place. If you can make it to Bible study, when we get ready to pray, you cry out to God, you watch God hear you. And you ain't been doing the Jonah, God hears you and sends that power fast. Man, I'm telling you, God answering prayers like that. You got to have faith now. You got to build strong faith. There's no getting around that. But now, as you do and as you have, I know you have, man, expect God to manifest that thing. Man, put a three-day limit on that thing. God, I need it in three. If, 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 if it can be done in three, God will do it in three. He'll do it in one if it can be done in one. If it's in the realm of possibility, God will do it for you. Oh, yeah. And your faith can speed up. It can accelerate things. It'll accelerate through the process. You've got to go through the process, but it'll accelerate through the process. Look at this here. But I, look at Jonah. Jonah talking totally different right now. Look at verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I do not want, listen, as, as comical as this sounds, this is real, this really happened. But no, God could not and would not pour that assistance to Jonah until Jonah changed his attitude. Now, a lot of folks think that they can have stank attitude and stank reasons for obeying God and that God's going to be happy with that. Now, that's like a one-eyed sacrifice. That's like bringing God a bull that's got two legs. God like, I ain't blind, I ain't stupid. I ain't left you. I see everything you're doing. I see your heart. God says, do this thing my way. Do this thing the way I prescribe it to be done. Do Follow the formula that I laid down and you'll get the result. But sometimes we, we just, we don't want to do it God's way. Not me, not you. No, we're doing it God's way because God gets the results. So let's read this again. I'm telling you right now, this thing is crazy. So, so here Jonah, Jonah done ran from God. He caught up in this fish belly. He'd been in this fish belly for three days. I guess he figured, God, all of the stuff I've done for you, you're going to get me out of this here. You're going to get me off the hook. You're going you gonna, you gonna to let me slide on this. And God says, no. He says, the Ninevites are at the point of judgment. They're at the point of death. They got one hope, one message, one word, and that's a simple word. And I got you to bring it to them. You got to get over all your personal issues and bring my word so that them rascals can have an opportunity to get saved, to repent. That's all I want you to do, Jonah. You ain't got to stay there. You ain't got to rape. You ain't got to start a church and, and pastor a church there. I just need you to start the revival with my word. Just go out there and tell them, repent. So the kingdom of God is at hand, judgment is imminent. That's all you got to say. And for you and I, Christians, all we got to say is, hey, are you saved? All right, I got to say this. This might sting a little bit. This might sting a little bit. If you don't do that, if you're not witnessing, first question, what's wrong? What's wrong? Now, it's understandable if you don't know how. No one's ever taught you. I've been sharing what you can do for this whole segment. All right. Number two, are you afraid? So you won't witness because you're in bondage to fear. Fear of what? You got to overcome your fear. You got to overcome your lack of knowledge. God needs you. 
God needs you now, not tomorrow, not next week. I'm talking to myself too, but you got to engage. You got to start approaching people just like Jonah had to approach Nineveh. Yeah, because the world is in bad shape. The world is in some bad, 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 bad shape. And I'm going to say we all, me too, I'm in this group too. We got to get in there before God. We got to pray. We got to pray the strength of God. And then we just got to go out there and say, okay, God, lead us and guide us. Which one you want me to talk to? And in the way this situation is right now, especially in America, this situation is real messed up. It's real messed up. A lot of tensions going on, but none of those tensions trump God saying, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. All right, look at this here. So Jonah now, Jonah, he all stressed out. He realized God is not playing. He understands now, I ain't dead. This fish, God done sent this fish and I'm in the belly of this fish. And so Jonah comes to himself and he says, okay, God, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Forgive me, okay? My soul fainted. My prayer came to you. You know what I mean, okay? Um, I, I, you know, I can't. I can't go on. Uh, you know what I mean? Chasing after and observing lying vanities. Verse eight. Um, and, and and forsake my own mercy. Uh, no, I'm going to repent. Look, Jonah had to repent right here. This is repentance. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. That's repentance in motion right now. This is the manifestation of repentance. This is the outbirth, the outgrowth of repentance. This is, this is what happens when you repent, that birth into praise and worship and, and respect and yielding to Almighty God and then obeying God. Look at this here. He says, I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Okay, this is not limited to money. But when folks start giving to God, you know God done touched their heart. You know their relationship, their relationship is growing. Their relationship is on fire. When people pay their tithes and give offerings, love gifts, all of that, God done touched their heart. They heard the preaching, but God touched the heart. And then they submitted to the word of God. Look at, look at Jonah. Jonah was probably the most hard-headed. Jonah was more hard-headed and had more, God would have lit him up. Worse than the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. They was a they was crazy. But Jonah knew God. Jonah knew the will of God. Jonah already worked for God. And now he's gonna do this. But the heart of God comes through. And the heart of God, and the heart of God, God says, Look, he says, and we're gonna see this in the next chapter. God says, Look, you gotta understand something. I'm sending you to the Ninevites. Because these people don't know their left hand from their right hand. These people are spiritually stupid. They are spiritually ignorant. They have been spiritually deceived. And I'm sending, that's why they do all that wickedness, listening to the devil. And I'm sending you there to go in there and show them the truth, to show them the right way. And this, they only shot. You the last shot. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, all right? And I'm getting ready. Listen, I'm, I'm going to say something strong. Some you, if God ever uses you in the capacity where you are the last voice a person hears before judgment, you are the last voice that they hear, the last voice of reason before calamity strikes, before the devil is allowed to light them rascals up. If they persecuting Christians, the last voice they may hear is your voice saying, God told me to tell you, you've been dogging him out. You've been dogging out his church and his people. Judgment's coming. That's an honorable position to be in. Many people don't want to be in that position. I get it. But that's an honorable position to be in, especially when them people repent. When that person that God sends you to repents, and do right by God, and, and then allows God to do something great through them. You know, the Ninevites, they were, they were considered a great people, a great city, but they was just wicked. Wickedness in great people is not good. 
but holiness and righteousness in great people is an amazing thing. That's a revival. Okay, so let's move on. Look at this here. Verse nine again. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay my pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Now watch this here. Soon as Jonah repented and started talking right, and started talking that, what's talking right? Talking right is talking willingness and obedience to God. Man, Jonah started talking willingness and obedience to God, repentance to God, talking about paying my vows, talk, acknowledging that salvation is of the Lord. I want to think that when he said salvation is of the Lord, he was still angry about going to Nineveh, but he was willing to go to Nineveh because he understood something about God, that God was a God of mercy and that God was a God of salvation. And there was nothing that nobody who gets an opportunity to choose Jesus, to choose to repent, there's nobody that that salvation is not for. Salvation is for everybody, but they gotta go through the process. They gotta go through the process. They gotta repent. They gotta accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and savior. And then third, they gotta start, they gotta turn from their wicked ways. Okay, so look at this here. And the Lord, I'm closing with this here, spake unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Now, watch this here, watch this here. I'm telling you, if you know some Jonas, you need to tell them, say, look, Listen, this might be the one that God's sending you to. He might be sending you to a Christian. They Jonah, they acting like Jonah. And you need to go to them and say, God told me to tell you, you need to repent. And you need to stop doing what you're doing. And you need to do right by God. And if they will repent, God will cause them to come out of that situation. Just like God spit Jonah onto the ground through that fish. God said to that fish, all right, I know you don't like him as a guest anyhow. And I know, Mr. Fish, you might be upset that you couldn't eat him. But now your job is done. Your assignment is fulfilled. Spit him out on dry land. Hear that fish hovering around the shore. Because God knew eventually Jonah, he's either going to die in that fish or he's going to obey I'm going to throw his butt right back up there. And no, <laughs> the fish didn't spit him out on Joppa soil. He spit him out right on the soil of Nineveh. God spoke to the fish. God can speak to your situation and the people in your situation and cause them to, to all right, spit you out is a little bit strong, but they can position you to do the will of God. They can position you for your next move of blessing. They can position you for your next move that God has ordained for your life. In other words, God will take a, a, a negative situation and, and cause you, he'll take a negative situation and cause you to be spit out on dry land. Now you gotta understand this here. Now I, I watch this here, hang in there, I'm about to close. I need five minutes, all right, real five minutes. Jonah's circumstances changed overnight. Jonah's circumstances changed overnight because it took him three days to change his attitude toward God. It took him three days in some uncomfortable circumstances and an uncomfortable environment before he said, okay, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to call on God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look again to the house of God. I'm going to start going to the house of God. All this happened in chapter two. All of this happened. God waited him out. Listen, three days, three nights, Jonah's in that belly's well. And on the, the third night, Jonah starts talking to God and he starts talking right. He starts repenting. He starts saying, God, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? I, you know, I still don't want to go to Nineveh, but I'm going to go to Nineveh because God, that's my assignment. And so here he is now. He's looking back to God. He's looking and he's praising. And he's giving glory to God. He's making vows to God. He's, he's getting ready to give offerings to God again, paying his tithes, giving his offerings again. He's going back to the house of God. Jonah done had a change and watch this here. And all of that, now he, he three days, three nights, he got seaweed, dead fish. He, you know what I mean? He done compared it to dying and going to hell. He done, he done, he done said my soul done fainted. Jonah was in a tough situation. But finally, the affliction of his situation got so overwhelming to him that he said, you know what, just like the prodigal said, I had it better when I was in my daddy's house. And so, so here Jonah now, he repents. God spits him out of that belly of the fish onto dry land. God told me to tell you, he about to put you into a situation 
where everything's been kind of all jacked up and hard and, and confusing, he's going to spit you out on solid ground. You about to come out on solid ground and you about to go and do work for God. You're going to do work, but you're going to do work for God with the right attitude. We got to do work for God with the right attitude. We can't have a busted, jacked up attitude. We got to say, okay, God, this is my assignment. I'm going to fulfill my assignment. I need your strength. I need your help, but I'm going to do it. Jonah turned and look at this here. I'm going to read verse, verse 10 again. Uh, verse 9, actually. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Look at this here. And the Lord, as soon as God heard that, as soon as God heard that come out of his mouth, he saw his heart. He saw the change that that affliction caused his heart. I don't want to go through a bunch of affliction to change to say yes to God. I ain't doing that one. Neither are you. You're not going to do that either. You're not going to have to go through hard, tough, challenging times to say yes to God. So watch this here. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah out on dry land. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God is positioning you to fulfill your destiny, to fulfill his will for your life. And I'm telling you right now, you are about to bless a whole multitude of folk. You about to, boy, I'm telling you, it's going to be like changing the whole city. You are about to have impact for the glory of God like Jonah had when he reached those Ninevites. I'm telling you, God has sent you to some Ninevites. He's given you an assignment. And because you become willing to do that assignment, lives of people are going to change all around you. They're going to get saved. They're going to give their life to God. They're going to look at you and they're going to say, how did you do it? Where, where, I, I, how did you get on this dry land? Well, you're going to have a story to tell. Oh, you're going to have a story to tell. And God is like, look, the story that we all have to tell is how we got willing and obedient before God. We fulfilled the assignment that God had given us. God gave us a word. Jonah didn't want to do it. Jonah was like, I'd rather die than go to Nineveh. And he wanted to die. And God wouldn't kill him. And God wouldn't let him get killed. But God prepared that fish. And that fish held on to him for three days. And then Jonah broke. Jonah said, okay, okay, God, I'll do your will. Oh, God, you are the merciful God. Oh, God, hallelujah, I need your strength. And, and next thing you know, when he said salvation comes from the Lord, I'm, God, I'm going to look to your house again. Huh. And all of a sudden, God speaks to the fish. All right, spit them out. Your job is done. Everybody's on an assignment. Everybody got something to do for God. We just want to start doing it. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up on that right there. Hey, people's lives are going to be changed for the better because of you, because of your obedience to God. Because no matter how much you hate the Ninevites, you're going to allow the word of God to come into your life and guide you and direct you and instruct you, and you're going to fulfill it with obedience. And when you do, the blessing of God going to overflow you like crazy. Did it for jo he did it for Jonah. And God is doing it for you. Because we are not doing it like Jonah did it. We're doing it with the right attitude. We're doing it trusting God. We're doing it with faith in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Well, come on, hallelujah. My time is all gone. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. And if it has, glory to God, reach out to us, respond to us. Let us know what you think about the message. Let us know how it's impacted you. You can reach us through the information in the description box. I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes of Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. It has been truly a pleasure to share the word of God with you. Hey, when we come back next time, we are going to be in chapter three. You think chapter two is exciting. You wait till we get to chapter three. Chapter three is when, when, when the assignment is in full bloom, full motion, and we see Jonah. Jonah, Jonah, I ain't going to tell you much. You need to read chapter three. and you need, Actually, you need to read all of it and then read chapter three and chapter four. And then next week, we'll catch up to you right here. Chapter three, Jonah. Oh, glory to God. Revival is coming in Jesus' name. God bless you. Shalom.